people there via pineapple that so That would be spongilicers. A, pain, a pan, panacea of spongies. Um, Cornucopia. Uh, Backrest, sorry, if, when we're doing some operational speak up here, if we could just um, kind of ease up with the talking um, in the back row, we'll get situated and then we'll continue if that's all right with y'all. Just want to make sure that uh, everything's getting relayed so we can keep everything rolling along here. Roger. Roger. Thank you. All right. So we're going to be positioning the vehicles. We have Atalanta moving. Uh, I'm going to move the ship at 105. 105. 105, which will be going um, up the slope in kind of this valley, um, uh, this, this kind of little bit of a depression here as we go up. Roger that. And, uh, and back row, as, as we go up, um, if, if we'd like to kind of veer in either direction, starboard or, um, or port to the direction we're going, just let me know. Um, and we can take reference high pack the contour lines there as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. What was that, 105 that I said? You said 105. Roger that. Um, I think because we're deep, I'll just get that move called in and you'll have plenty of time to kind of Heading get, 105, get right up right. forward. Bridge, bridge nav. Can we step 30 meters, bearing 105? Thank you. Right, it feels like we're on the move. Is everyone good for a round of introductions? All right, I'll start us off. My name is Daniela Gerfay. I'm the Science Communication Fellow for this watch. Um, when I'm not on the EV Nautilus, my day job, I am a high school teacher. I teach over at Radford High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's located close to Pearl Harbor. I teach marine science and AP environmental science out there. Prior to becoming a teacher, I worked as a marine biologist for 10 years. I did a lot of fisheries work, but also did some yeah, consulting copy that. work in Australia and Papua New Guinea. Jonathan, we'll head it over to you. Yeah, my name is Jonathan Feely. I'm the Ocean Exploration Trust's media producer. Um, I do all things moving images uh, for the Trust, and in this particular expedition, um, I'm the lead for the Triclops camera system that you see on Satellite Fayette 3. It's a three camera cinematography uh, array of cameras. Uh, it's actually, its technical term is called the wide field camera array. Uh, but we affectionately call it Triclops here on the system, or on the ship. Um, it's designed to take incredibly beautiful imagery suitable for uh, projection on large dome displays um, <laughs> or other full room projection. Yeah, see cucumber there for you, Jonathan. Oh yeah, let's go. get that. Full 12K five, sea five cucumbers. Highlight. I was joking. Please don't slow down. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's about it. Um, looking, looking to make beautiful images. So fun fact for everyone about Jonathan, even though he is our media producer, he is terrible at social media. <laughs> and, <laughs> and does not even know how to make a story on Instagram. I mean, there's newfangled technologies, everyone. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with that? Newfangled technology as he's the lead of, like, the newest I have, technology I have our is. fantastic social media <laughs> manager, Jamie Zachariah, to help me get the TikToks out, <laughs> figure, out figure out what kids are doing these days. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> You're not dating yourself at all, no, by Jonathan. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm a dad now. I'm allowed to do this. All right, Dan, over to you. Hi, I'm Dan Dietz. Uh, I am the watch lead, and I guess my job here is to follow the dive plan and find anything interesting and uh, search for it and find new things. So when I'm not here, I am a program officer at the Office of Naval Research, and our job is to really... Uh, develop new, you know, look at the science, ocean sciences and develop, you know, new theories and new technologies that go along with those theories. All right, Zach. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Taylor. I'm over here in the data logger position. 
Um, so we keep track of everything we see, such as those samples we just collected, writing down all that metadata, getting it, getting it recorded so we know uh, what it was, where it was from. Um, so yeah, that's a big part of the job, as well as as we go along, trying to help ID things, and again, just uh, collecting all the data so we can go back on it whenever needed. Um, we're not up here in the, in the control van, we're down in the lab, building models from all of this photogrammetry and all these uh, dyes that we're doing. Um, and when I'm not here with Nautilus, I am a graduate student finishing up at UH Hilo, uh, where my work focuses on uh, ob observing nearshore reef uh, using um, remote underwater video systems. So, yeah, happy to be here, excited for this one. Hopefully it gets a little more active here as we go up. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I'm John Culberson, former congressman from Houston's west side avid supporter of space exploration and ocean exploration and have uh, had the pleasure of working with Dr. Bob Ballard uh, for many years in supporting the this in, in, incredible uh, real-time exploration of the ocean that allows scientists, uh, classrooms, and people all over the world to uh, experience what the crew is here experiencing and exploring the ocean bottom in, in uh, what Bob calls telepresence, which is, I think, undoubtedly the future of ocean exploration because it allows a scientist who's a specialist, either as a geologist or in a particular type of biology, to actually see, to actually make a proposal, have it executed by the team here on the Nautilus, and then see their idea come to fruition, even though they may be back in their laboratory in the continental United States, they can they can see uh -huh. and participate and observe what's happening so. on the screen. It's exciting work. I'm thrilled to be here and to be a part of it, and to have helped make sure this dream of Dr. Ballard's became a reality uh, over my years in Congress. Beautifully said. Thank you. All right, Remy, on over to you. Hi, this is Renato Kane. I'm a uh, navigator on this watch. Um, I've been working with Ocean Exploration Trust for about 10 years, um, kind of doing remote sensing through seafloor mapping and the subsea acoustics for vehicle positioning. And then Simon. Good afternoon, my name is Simon. I'll be your pilot for the next four hours or so, flying at an altitude of approximately two meters or six feet above the ocean floor as we get further and up this, uh, up this summit. Um, yeah, collecting samples as we go and seeing what we can see. Um, in three years in ocean science RVing and uh, 13 years prior to that working in the oil and gas industry with our various ROVs doing construct subsea construction, inspection and various other tasks. And a military veteran of 19 years prior to that. So, aging myself there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to do, do the math on that one. There, yeah. Turn that up. <laughs> you're not aging yourself, you're just showing your level of experience. <laughs> Green. There you go. And then Mike, on over to you. Uh, Mike Burns. I am in charge of Operation Overwatch of Hercules, uh, piloting Atalanta. Um, my, going into my second year here with Nautilus, uh, work also as the deck chief on board, uh, professional mariner for the last 20 some odd years. So. And then Dave. Hi, Dave Robertson, uh, video engineer uh, and uh, in charge of uh, recording all this stuff, keeping all the cameras straight, uh, communications and uh, zooming in on things. And we all love a really nice good zoom on our, in our animals. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think that's Ship's still moving all the time here. Um, to that. Just a bit slower than. than I goes. Say, I'm about to run out of tether on me. Yeah. Pause in here. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll go to back and and forth here. I think um, just kind of looking. Unless Jonathan, uh, did you want to main? Apologies. Can you repeat? Roger. Yeah. So uh, we're going to alter course a little bit just to head up um, 
a little less in this kind of valley pocket here and go up the, the slope. It's not entirely ridge-like, but it will be um, kind of more of a uh, less in the little valley pocket. Sure. Um, let me just take a zoom out here. So I think probably the... Uh, Dan, if, if you could take a look at high pack back there. Um, so we have an option to kind of go this way, up, up this here. Um, okay. Or, you know, we could we could jet over to this and, and come up this slope here. Um, we could also just kind of continue on as we were. Um, rather than go in this valley here, we'll just kind of go up to waypoint seven as we were kind of headed towards. Following so. the valley? Um, it's a little, it's kind of like splitting the difference, honestly. And this, this slope, I don't anticipate to be Hey, R Rennie, he'd like to go up the left-hand side, left-hand ridge. This here? Yes. Okay, will do. Thanks. Let me just uh, get some alternate waypoints going on. That is not connected. What do you mean connected? You and I have a two point. Jonathan, in the chat, we have a recommendation that our blogs should be dated. Blogs should be dated. Yeah, that there's no dates on our blogs, and I just checked. I was looking at the newest one we had, this testing, and yeah, there's no dates on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty shot. We're going to alter our course to 084. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, I didn't realize you were busy over there. We're altering our uh, ship bearing to 084. 084, correct. Yeah. Uh, the ship move is nearly complete, so we'll still, there's, there'll still be a little bit of the 105 stuck in there left, but wait till this move's uh, finished out, and I'll call the next one 084. And then, Zach, I have a question for you. Um, have you ever yeah. taken a sea star test sample before? I would, I would assume oh. Nautilus at some point has taken a sea star sample. Oh, yeah. I mean, on this trip, we haven't, we haven't we been have, doing a lot of sampling. This one, we're not doing much sampling because yeah. we're testing out our camera. But if yeah. you look at our other ones where we're doing more of our biological assessments, then definitely yeah. taking samples. But this is my first expedition, so I cannot give any yeah, hands-on experience with that one. Yeah. Bridge nav. Five zero meters, bearing zero eight five. Thank you. And then Simon, are you able to answer a question? Sure. All right. What is the deepest depth Hercules has ever gone? Well, I'd have to ask someone who's been here <laughs> more than one trip, like, like, like yourself. To, I know Hercules. To that. I know Hercules' max depth that it can go is four thousand meters. That's correct. So we've been uh, we've approached that um, in the definitely in the thirty eight hundreds for sure. Um, I don't know if we've done thirty nine, but we've definitely gone uh, about that deep. And then Atalanta can go deeper than that. Can um, go to 6,000 meters. That's right, so we, we brought that down to at least 5,600. Um, just a couple cruises ago when we were diving on the uh, World War II aircraft carriers in, uh, that from Battle of Midway off of, uh, that are contained within the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Which are some very cool footage and videos. Just go over to our website, nautiluslive.org, and really check out those blogs and um, footage and highlights from those dives. It is very incredible. And an important part of our history as well. Yeah. But for me personally, my personal record is 4,380 meters. And where did you dive that? that? So that was in the in the Pacific, in the, an area called the clarion Clipperton zone, where we were looking at uh, sea life associated with the nodules on the seafloor that we're kind of like what we're looking at now, but on the abyssal plain in the clarion Clipperton zone. Mike, what's the deepest you've ever dove with an ROV? Ooh, um, it would have been on this uh, on this ship uh, during the Palmyra cruise, and I think it was down to 3,200 meters. 
Does it get harder to drive the ROVs the deeper you go, or does it kind of feel the same? It feels the same, to be honest. Um, the thing with the ROV is because all of our signals and power travel all the way through the umbilical, the, the ROV is effectively, from a signal perspective, always at the same distance away from us. So, yeah, however much umbilical um, Hercules has, Hercules and uh, Atalanta has, say 5,000 meters or five kilometers, we're effectively always that distance away from the ROV when we're at the control station. So, yeah, it's... The hardest part is flying at, at the surface, where you get a lot more wave action and everything else. However, once you get deeper, the sea settles out, and it's, yeah, flying at 2,000 is the same as 4,000. Um, yeah. Obviously, you, you lose the light once you get out of the photic zone, and everything pretty much settles out. I know, uh, so we have another question in the chat asking what's been the deepest and shallowest dive this expedition. I know our shallowest one was when we we're kind of in that coral garden sea mounds off of Kona, I believe. But which one has actually been our officially deepest one so far? Uh, I think so far it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we were down to 1,800 meters. I don't, I don't think we were that deep on the um, north side of Mal Malachi. Um, and I don't know, I don't believe Luigi's that deep. I'll have to double check though. I, I, I do think it's this one too. I do think that it's this yeah, one it's as this well. One yes, as well. it's 1800 meters. So I was just asking uh, shrimp count. Do we have two? I and, think we have two. And cucumber count, one? One, yes. Someone in the chat said we should do a cucumber count, so we should. I've already started. You already it. started the cucumber count. All right. Sponsored by Jonathan. <laughs> Yay. Jonathan's cucumber count. I'll do it. It's better than the sea slug count. No, that's not true. I like sea slugs. How many grains of sand are there in the ocean? Are we philosophizing now? Oh yeah, no, I'm going deep. Another How many rays of sunshine are there? How many? How many photons? Ooh, now we're getting scientific. A viewer asked about these kind of holes that we have in the ground and um, products of it. If it's an animal or if it's something else disturbing it, my guess would be a burrowing animal of some sort. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, uh, most likely. You get that in shallow depths, too. You have little fish, little invertebrates that burrow and just kind of pop in and pop out. Um, so, yeah, likely the same thing going on here. Previously in the dive, we had ripples in the water, which indicates an area of high current. I don't see a significant amount of ripples here, so I'm yeah. sure the current's very low. We're also we're, we're going up the slope right now a little bit, or we're... Yeah, we're up the slope. Yeah. That tends to even them out as well. Yeah. And then, Rennie, I have a question for you if you have a chance. Sure. All right. What does the heave, pitch, and roll mean, and how can it impact the ship? Sure. Um, and Mike, just to let you know, uh, just sorry, one second. I just saw that camera shutter in the winch. Um, I think it was as you were doing that, so we'll just keep an eye. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, heave, pitch, and roll. So, when you have a ship, um, if it was kind of just sit sitting on land, it would be uh, stationary. But here, I'll see the, uh, the the waves, the swell, the wind, and the current kind of affect our, our movement. Um, and so, um, let me see if I can describe this without a visual cue. So, heave is the up and down of the ship. Um, just if, if you imagine the ship staying level, but it's just rising up and down, that's the heave. Um, uh, the pitch is if the bow of the ship, the forward part of the ship, tips forward or, or up, kind of forward or back. So that's kind of that axis, the center of rotation um, around the center of the ship, kind of, if you think about that. And then roll would be um, if you lean left or right, port, or, port to starboard, that's, uh, that's roll. And then yaw is the last one, and that would be... Um, kind of as the ship 
uh, ship's direction changes to port or starboard, to left or right, because um, there are all, all the forces there. And so uh, all of those we use in a, in a two-body system, we use uh, a secondary ROV, which we have at Atlanta, to decouple that motion from the ship from Hercules. So you notice Hercules has really smooth video, really nice um, uh, kind of, it's not being yanked around by the ship at all. But if you watch Atalanta, when, um, especially in rough, rough seas, which we haven't, thankfully we haven't had on this expedition, but um, even now in the swell, you can see Atalanta's camera kind of moving up and down. That's from um, kind of being connected to the ship. Um, so Hercules has a lighter tether connected to Atalanta that's kind of decoupling that motion there. Thank you, Rennie. That was a great explanation of it. And sure. then Dan and was back here playing with our 3D model to oh, great. <laughs> show um, them. And then uh, pitch the, the those same factors, uh, you know, with an ROV, you can you can think about, but it really doesn't pitch and roll too much. There's there's a little bit here and there, but for the most part, um, that syntactic foam on top keeps it pretty pretty level. Um, but then you, yaw and uh, and heave are still factors in when it's flying around. I mean, the heave is really uh, controlled, hopefully, by the thrusters. Um, but theoretically, if there were internal waves or something, it could be affected by, by that. And that syntactic foam that Rennie is talking about is the yellow part of Hercules at the top there. Yeah, that's right. Bridge, now. Let's do one more step. Five zero meters, zero eight five. All right, and we have an excellent question Zero here yes, thank you. from Vanessa, who is age 11, Ooh. and she would like to know if, since it's so dark underwater, can the fish see anything, and how do they find their food? So, Zach, you want to take this one for Vanessa? Speaking of that, I think we have a tripod uh, fish there on oh, the Oh, we do have a little fish there. Tripod. Those ones, I have, this will be my first tripod. Yeah, we'll hang on for a second. Uh. So tripod fish get their names because they're, they have their fins have been modified and they kind of stick them out like a tripod on the sand. Oh, it's swimming on out to us. It wants a close up. <laughs> Back deck, back deck, control, you mind standing by on the winch, please? Yeah, so fish um, in the deep and in the dark in general, um, what you'll find is, is they have large eyeballs first to start with. So especially even on the reefs, the ones that lives in the caves and cracks and the ones that are nocturnal, you'll notice they have very large eyes just to be able to um, absorb any light that they can. Um, but fish also have multiple um, senses that they're using. They have uh, what's called a lateral line down where they can also sense movements of things in the water as well. Um, I, they obviously have sense of smell as well. So, yeah, they're not just relying on sight. Um, there's a lot of creatures in the ocean, really, that uh, have evolved to use multiple different ways to taste, um, even just kind of like through their skin. Control um, so, standing by. so, yeah, these deep water fish are, they're evolved for this. This is, this is what they're good at. Um, you put them up in shallow water, they probably wouldn't do too well because um, they would probably just sit in the open thinking they're fine and, get, and then get picked up. So, um, yeah, really just... Um, enhanced sense, senses, um, or in some cases, just really diminished, and they just have very low energetic needs. So they, yeah, they can they can sit and wait, wait for that feel. Um, we also there's some fish right that have like little essentially like lures on their body that use like that bring things in. Right? Sorry, uh, I see the stock sponge on the yeah. left, but that the one sticking yeah. up, it's very it's very unique looking. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I've seen that one before. The yellow on the rock there? Uh, not. It's on the right. You see, it's sticking out in the bottom right-hand corner of okay. Zeus right now. Yeah. Gotcha. Unless that's a coral. I mean, it looks like a coral, but yeah, hard to see. Can't. And we have that tripod fish is back now.
So it must be a coral, um, but it just seems like the polyps are so spaced far apart. Yeah. The current's not in our favor. No. No. <laughs> Strange. I love the right, Atlanta view. We're starting view. to get in the window here um, with uh, Atalanta and the slope. If we could do a zoom out on Atalanta yep. and just Zooming get out. some context here. Um, ship's still moving, 085. Roger. And Atalanta heading is now, what is that, 120? Yep. Roger. Back deck, back deck control. Continue standing by. We're still doing a ship movement. Yeah, pretty getting pretty close there. So there must be a local, um, a local high there to yep. the port of yep. Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Altitude is Argus altitude. Yeah, Atlanta altitude is uh, nine meters. It's got a steep slope, but yeah, we got some. Yeah. Some rocks giving us better targets. Yeah. Yeah. Someone called that sponge an ET sponge. To me, it kind of almost looked like a toilet brush. Like yeah, the ET sponge, that's actually a um, kind of a common name for one of the sponges. Mm. So it's a, it is indeed kind of referred to as an ET sponge. What's in that hole right there? I'll do a quick TVL reset. So someone in the chat gave us a philosophical question. If it's a sea cucumber, is it really a pickle? There are actually sea pickles. That's a, that's a different <laughs> organism than pyrosomes. And pyrosomes look much more like a pickle than a sea cucumber looks like a cucumber. And they're they're hollow. I, I came across a bunch once when I was up in Alaska. They had just tons and tons of these pyrosomes. They're really kind of cool. Yeah, sometimes there's like almost like pyrosome blooms. I remember yes. a few years Yes, we had back, a huge one was, a few yeah. years, yeah. One of the fishermen put it on his nose. Here's another shrimp. So now we're at three. Three shrimp. Mike, do you have, um, are you able to answer a question for us? Yes. All right, someone asked, is someone flying Atalanta? And yes, that is Mike. <laughs> Mike, can you explain how Atalanta is controlled? Yeah, so Atalanta is uh, connected to our 6-8 cable uh, that carries the fiber optic as well as the electrical connections that feeds Hercules. Um, I have a controller uh, that's sitting next to me where I can control the up and down movements of uh, the winch. Um, and so as we start coming up, I can go ahead and winch in and pull Atalanta up and that will give Hercules a little bit better of a camera view, but when we're doing surveys, um, and or if uh, Adelant or Hercules needs a little bit more tether, I can go ahead and actually decrease the distance uh, vertically between Hercules and Atalanta, and uh, and let Hercules have a little bit more tether to be able to uh, to maneuver and, and uh, go in different directions. And Maybe. Mike. I've noticed the game controller by you guys. What is that used for? 
that is <laughs> that is actually for our bubble cam. So uh, bubble cam feed is not currently up right now um, on the screens, but uh, it's another camera that we can go ahead and maneuver and look at our different gauges uh, on Hercules and keep an eye on on uh, our pressures. Thank you. Simon, if you don't mind um, kind of at strafing a little bit more to port, I think that'll um, that'll help us with our uh, our slope on the port side of Atalanta and we'll get all sorted out. Thank you. Yep. No worries. So stocked crinoid there. Beautiful red color. And the, when you have these stocked crinoids, another name for them are sea lilies. Which I can definitely see how they look like a lily. So do they move? Right they do they're not move. Oh, okay. They're on a stock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm seeing you come up. So um, uh, Simon's coming over to the oh. port. If Roger. you kind of like bring your whole track over here, that would, that would help. No worries. So you have two main groups of crinoids. You have the ones that are stocked and the ones that are not. So the ones with the stock are called sea lilies, and the ones that are not on a stock are called feather stars. Feather stars. And the feather stars are the ones that are able to move. And we saw one kind of fall off the cliff edge on an earlier dive and kind of floated down. And they can actually use their their arms and to swim it. They're a very weird looking way of swimming. Maybe Atalanta, if you bring your head in closer so why to the do they 5 track, uh, we'll be able to see kind of what's going on. And then Simon's moving over that way. Yep. It looks like there's just like a bit of rockiness here. That's a, prom a local prominence. Um, once we get out over it, uh, we find a move up slope. So they move just for the reason any of us move, to find a new place, habitat, space to live, food, um, mates. Things better like crops. Oh. Better swing. <laughs> Moving on up. Yeah. So, Renny, I have another question in the chat for you. Sure. They want to know if you're a permanent resident on Nautilus and if you're going <laughs> to be <laughs> on board on the next <laughs> expedition. Uh, this is actually my last expedition for the year. I was on for about five months this season. Um, starting That's practically a permanent resident, I feel yeah, like. Um, I was on and off, but mostly on since May, perhaps. And or how are your eyeballs or... feeling staring at screens for so long? Oh, doing all right. Uh, and then uh, looking forward to next, next year's season. <laughs> So we just passed another cucumber. That makes two. Two. Jonathan Shrimp's cucumber count to two. Shrimp Three, still have the lead. Oh no, two on this watch. Two this on this watch. watch. There was one on the previous watch. Yeah. Actually, I think Dave has more days at sea than I do this year. That's so, Dave. Yeah, possible. I, s I tend to get the longer legs, so I'm usually on five, six weeks, yeah. and then off for a month, and then on five, six weeks, off for a month. This seems to be the way it's going this year. I did like 150, 155, somewhere in there. Yeah, I haven't counted them all up. What uh, is both of last yours? Year I got, <laughs> last year I got stuck because of two people that weren't able to uh, yeah. to come out and I was on the ship three and a half months straight. Is that your longest stint you've ever that's, done? That's my longest stint, yeah. Renny, what was the, has been your longest stint? About that, during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. We were out, I was out for between three and four months. We tended to do longer uh, longer legs during the uh, pandemic because of, uh, uh, well, lack of personnel, uh, and also because uh, we were doing two week quarantines uh, and that kind of stuff. So we were uh, keeping people on the ship longer. Just to It's impressive though that Nautilus was still running, doing operations yeah, during we the pandemic. Yeah, we were very proud to get out that, that season. Yeah, there yeah. were a lot of a lot of ships that were just important. That was it. Turned everybody loose, sent them home. Yeah, and a lot of sacrifices that were made personally to do that too. We yeah. yep. had a two two week quarantine that we did yeah. prior to getting onto the ship, and that was a 
shortly after a major refit of Nautilus, including the installation of the mobile van. So how long were we in shakedown for, <laughs> or pre-mobilization? Gosh, I, I forget now. Yeah, uh, month. Month, yeah. Yeah, and then continuing as we went on, yeah, 2021 was an interesting year. Well, 2020, we got, yeah, we got in a few months in 2020. Jonathan, you see here, we oh. up in the uh, sea cucumber, yeah. Atalanta Mezzo. Oh, we've yeah. got um, kind of a stronger wall. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's good. Maybe we'll see some life on there for you. But definitely some more structure here up on as we got out of the valley and into, I wouldn't quite call it a ridge, but more of the, uh, yeah, more of the prominence in the area. Life finds a way. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. That was a had a purplish tint in that cucumber. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of a pretty cucumber. I'm starting the uh, I'm starting the time lapsing because because I can. <laughs> you have yeah. that control. I have this control. We Here have. we are. Uh, yeah. Pilots, I might hold off on the ship move until we see if that. So track off is going. Hercules yeah, track off so is going. This whole region here, if it's anything to note about it, or just typical settings. Roger. We'll continue on afterwards. Yeah, we'll copy that. And we're doing 1 60th of a second uh, JPEGs this time. Okay. And uh, once every three seconds, F8 across the board. We're starting to get into this rockier terrain, so we have something other than sand, so that's pretty nice. Hopefully we'll start to see a little bit more life here soon. Uh, ship has held the uh, Atalanta May swing. I think Atalanta has an, a, maybe 20 meters to swing, so. Yeah, probably that. We'll keep moving, moving forward up here and see what we can see. Roger, yeah. Really cool kind of pillow basalts here, it looks like. Yeah. Back deck, back deck. Uh, you are going to be needing to take control of the winch. Some of the extruded ones, some of the longer ones. Back deck, back deck, wind, or control, please come up 10 meters. Is that an official handover there? We're going to. That's an official running. handover, I lost control. Roger, Roger. He's coming up 10, so we're good. It's an exceptionally beautiful view of. Hercules ascending in satellite feed two here. Back deck, back deck, control. Please add additional five meters on top of that. I will say we're quite lucky to have extraordinarily good water clarity at this site. Yeah, yeah not as much. Um, Roger that back snow. deck. Can you come up an additional 10 meters, please? So as you can tell, this the slope has significantly increased. Yeah. So we're moving up slope, um, right on the ridge. So hopefully we see some more corals. I can see like, you know, a bamboo coral. There's a sea cucumber. Oh, have the sea cucumbers taken oh, the lead? I see a shrimp in the fisheye view there. And Far right. That, is that is oh. that shrimp gone by? Yep, that was definitely a shrimp. And we got another shrimp. I wasn't sure what winch, the red was. Winch, winch. So I'll stop on the winch, please. So what are we officially at for our shrimp and sea cucumber count? Uh, we are a four and four. Oh, it's a tie. Zach, what kind of uh, coral is that? Oh, cannot tell yet. That's a new one I feel like we haven't really seen. I don't know, maybe it's just the angle of it. Yeah, I think it's the angle. It may be yeah. a primnoid, but it's hard to see from. Yeah. It's really nice color, though. Yeah, the base. it's really nice. That's a close up. I hope you got it from his good side. Oh. Yep. I'm 
jump on it. Okay, if we're all sorted out there, um, we can continue on uh, with our ship track. How do you feel about that, Simon? Yep, copy that. Ready when you are. All right, zero eight five. Another cucumber, or is it? Five zero meter step bearing zero eight five. Thank oh you. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's another, another cucumber. cucumber. Oh. It's number five. I think we should. Surprisingly robust bodies on cucumbers. Yeah. yeah. I thought they'd be doing the first samples of them you know, to actually pick them up with their robotic arms. And they're, they're pretty robust. <laughs> I thought there'd be a lot winch, more gelatinous winch. than that. Control, there. please come up yeah. five meters. Although there's a species, a sea cucumber called the stickopus that can actually. If oh, that's an umbalula um, uh, octocoral. Oh. Is that right, Zach? Uh, I think that's oh, I see you there. Okay. Yeah, I can. I'll verify that quick. Nice. Good eye. Copy that. A little zoom, Dave. Well, show me. Show me. Yeah. Really interesting polyps on this one. Yeah. They're massive. Nice. We got, oh, okay. we got a little shell like there. We've got a uh, iridogorgia to the left that so you can see it in the uh, air. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. just sticking up right yeah. there. A nice, beautiful spiral iridogorgia. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, Mike, I have viewers asking what happened to Atalanta's control on the wench. Uh, currently, right now, uh, our winch control uh, remote up here is having a, a little bit of a problem, so we're troubleshooting it right now. But until then, uh, we're using our our other personnel, uh, TJ, uh, who's on the back deck, uh, controlling from our outside control station. It's good to have redundancy built into the system, so there's the remotes uh, on the social deck for when we launch and recover the vehicles. Um, and we also have a remote up here in the control van for when we're diving. Um, but if there is a problem with either one of them, we can operate there. And then there's actually a control down by the winch itself, down in the winch hole, um, that you could operate from there. So we've got options. Um, obviously, some are more convenient for depending on what operation you're doing. But uh, it's good to have a fail safe, and we always have radios. And we can, um, it's a nice shot. kind of pass the word along about how to make moves. Zach, what, what kind of coral is this one, the spirally one? Um, I think it's a Chrysogorgia day of some type. It's a Ritogorgia. Ritogorgia? Okay. Ritogorgia, yeah. If I could, I'd like to ask the uh, team to talk about the nutrition, amount of nutrients in the water. In fact, the water's so clear. I know that in Galveston on the Texas coast, the, the muddier and and more opaque the water is, the more nutrients that are available. And what uh, what is causing winch, the lack of nutrients control. here? It's come and, up five meters. And, and what does uh, the uh, the depth have to do okay. with the lack of nutrients in sea life? So nutrients is a it's kind of it's a it's a difficult topic on that everything depends on nutrients, right? So. A lot of you notice we don't have too much marine snow. So sometimes you get more of that marine snow. Some of it's also due to the lighting we're using so that it doesn't Wait, shine control that. copies. Go ahead and send control back up to mm -hmm. the van. We're going to do a test. But a lot of times nutrients is actually tied up into your corals. Copy that. 
So if you don't want, in a coral reef, it's important that you don't have too much nutrients because if you have too much nutrients, you have opportunistic species that can take that and really take over. So think your algae and whatnot. Back and the deck, algae deck, can grow. Please take control of once again. Can grow over the coral. It can um, take it so that other species end up being outcompeted. Whereas if the coral yeah, is actually like kind of in a nutrient depletion because all the nutrients is tied up into the coral. So as animals eat the coral, they get the nutrients, but it keeps Cucumber. a lot of the nutrients from being free and floating around. And then a lot of that nutrients also get stored into your sediment and your bottom. So that's why it's important from upwelling because we still want access to that nutrients, but in a controlled winch, way. Winch. Control, please come up five meters. Thank you, and specifically, why are we not seeing more marine life here? Is it an absence of nutrients? Is it the depth? Is it a combination of both? Um, so in deeper waters, you do tend to have less because not as many animals can handle the different pressures, the lack of light, the temperatures that's in the deep. So you do Copy have it. a lot less life in it, but certain areas will have more than others and nutrients is a big source of it, right? So if you go to areas such as whale falls where you have this big surplus of nutrients put into the ecosystem, you'll have tons of life surrounding that because it's a food source. Um, hydrothermal vents are also an area where you have a lot of abundance of a life. Um, it could be a mixture of reasons why we're not seeing more corals and sponges here, but Zach, what do you think? Why aren't we not seeing more here? Yeah, I think, Larry? I think you, oh, you can go ahead, Larry. I, I'm working on IDs anyway, so you're good. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I could just guess, and um, we are in this kind of chain of seamounts, and there's prevailing currents, and we're now really kind of, so, yesterday uh, we were, well not yesterday, we were on the same side yesterday, but I, I, I was on last leg. Last leg we worked on the opposite side of these seamounts, and we did see much, much more. And I think it might have a lot to do with uh, how that general prevailing current is, and the fact that we're in this little nook that may be hidden behind. We, we see there's evidence of strong currents here, but it may be that a lot of the nutrients have been uh, sheltered away. They kind of think of it like a, rain, uh, a mountain a mountain belt that, that creates a, a rain shadow on the other side. And maybe there's a nutrient shadow here sitting on this side. I yeah. don't know, just a guess. That makes sense, Larry. I agree. All right, thank you. Allie's going to take over for me as I go for dinner. So I'll see you guys in a half an hour. Uh, ship is paused there. I'll just uh, Atlanta swinging probably a little bit more, and then I'll call in another just as we get Roger caught up here. Cucumber. Oh. Ernie, what again did you uh, think the long, stocky octocoral was? <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, um, umbalula. Okay. Yeah. That's like, kind of yeah. like umbrella. Yeah. Confirm that one. Yeah. That's what I got. Perfect. Yeah, there's quite a few species of that, but they uh, they haven't decided if they're individual or not yet. Yeah, there's, it seems like they're just vary in size a little bit, but nonetheless, quite the interesting anatomy for a coral. Oh, there's a Walteria sponge. They're kind of fuzzy looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I don't think they're fuzzy to handle, though. <laughs> and we all know we're on the lookout for a dead sponge, right? Roger. I'll continue uh, on the move if you're all right with that, Simon. Okay. Yeah. Bridge now. Hi, right, Oriel. Let's step five zero meters, bearing zero eight five. Fifty zero eight five. Yep. A viewer online is commenting that it's challenging to ID or survey things when they change names or can't decide groupings. Yeah, that's a that's a big part of why we use scientific names too. It's just because it's more universal that way. Because you could go, um, you know, from one area to another that has the exact same species, but they have their own common name there, and it gets pretty confusing pretty quick. Um, so the scientific name is always a good way to just, everybody can rely on one. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of even ID and species, like um, determining new species or not, you have uh, what are often called either a grouper and clusters who, who tend to look for very drastic differences to consider them different species. And then you have the others who are looking to name a new species on any little thing essentially. So yeah, taxonomy is an is a interesting field and um, yeah, it's kind of kind of split even between the taxonomists themselves of what what's worthy of becoming a new species or a subspecies or whatnot. So, uh, Dan, we're moving zero eight five. Uh, we were paused just for a moment, but I just called another one in. Uh, so I expect Atalanta to move again. Hey, and right the winch is being controlled by the social guy. Uh, I see that. Interesting shape. What do you do? Uh, God's telling Robert that he needs to complete his uh, <laughs> winch joy box project. What version is that on now? Uh, two, I think. Or point two. <laughs>
A viewer's asking if uh, anybody knows uh, what the pale fish was that was closer to us than the eel just now. I Did anybody catch that. Yeah. yeah, I missed it. I didn't see it. I didn't even see the eel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, is that before I got here? <laughs> Maybe it was. I don't know. <laughs> I saw a real tiny little fish. Um, maybe that's what they're referring to, but it was, yeah, like a couple centimeters big only. It didn't ever come into focus, but. Sad day, right? When all we have to look at is a solitary stock crane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we had a just a couple clustered, a couple of different things, but for the most part, a lot of stuff down here has been kind of standalone. Nice sparse. Yeah, we were just kind of thinking about why that may be, and currents, and kind of a maybe a uh, kind of a a lack of nutrients from currents. What is it's a really great? What does Brian say? We're really good at predicting where the corals aren't, but we've <laughs> not got really good at predicting where they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything can kind of be going what we think would be going in their favor, and then we get down there and there's not, or there are. Um, I don't think we're often surprised by um, uh, a large amount of density of corals in a place where, where we didn't expect them. Um, it's more so, like you said, that when we go into a place that we do expect them, it's, it's still hit or miss. That was a nice zoom, Dan. And I didn't have to touch a thing. <laughs> it just happened to be... Just happened to be in a prime time to brush the camera with it. Once again, I was expecting some more photogrammetry, so I might have to make some hmm. more map after I get out of here so we can continue on. Although we are a bit deeper today, so it'll take a little longer to get to the surface on recovery. Well, Larry's a pretty much, he's a, he keeps things moving. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I think we expected on that flat bit of, um, some more excitement for the photogrammetry folks but yeah we hope so here's a mystery why is that one headless just for halloween what's eating them mm. we, we, saw, we saw a uh, the little flower we saw a starfish on one before that was eaten away yeah head fell off that one we were wondering how the starfish got there Flirting with TJ, or was TJ flirting with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not flirting, he's just Irish. This is how it is. Yeah, he's just <laughs> Irish. <laughs> We're going to need more monitors, Dave. Our use of real estate here is not optimal. Definitely going to need monitor five and seven. Come on, 
no takers. I, you know, from a, uh, a hypothetical uh, range control up standpoint. five, up five meters. Sure. You start surrounding you with them, so you look, you look to starboard, and there's your starboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could probably fit some more in. I go ahead. Thank you. I want to take over the data lab and oh, move my tilt. all mm -hmm. the printers and uh, everything off the forward wall and just cover the whole thing in monitors and then have a big long front row <coughs> raised, big long back row. Just think how many people we could get in that room. A viewer wrote in that the largest recorded cryoid Shrimp. is. Uh, 40 meters, a stem with 40 meters in length. Well, did you say four zero or four? Four zero. Wow. Huh. We'd be able to see that with Atlanta. I think somebody added a zero thing. They're going to have to train the new winch operator, Ray. Did you guys put a <coughs> chunk of lead on when you took the Ethernet bottle off? Why oh, do you feel light? Or, uh, yeah, that's 35. That's usually uh, neutral right there. Someone wrote in that they recall from a previous Nautilus expedition that they were looking for some kind of snails that eat the crinoid tops. Do you remember that? Correct. Yeah. A long time viewer. That was, um, what was Brian's last name? I can't Brian so. Kennedy? Uh, yeah, the uh, ex Noah guy? Yeah. Yeah. Brian Kennedy. Brian Kennedy was, uh, that's where that came from. He was, uh, was one of the questions that he was trying to answer is what, what was, uh, topping the stock crinoids. Was, I think he had some theories, but he would often pose that question to the, uh, to the room. You see that wall there? Yeah, something in front of you. Cucumber. No idea. Any ideas? No. Unless it's a short and stubby holothurian of some kind, but... Oh. Puffball. We're gonna keep moving. <coughs> Got some vertical in our future here. Yeah. 
And that's a rather cool rock. The uh, ship's paused right now. It just finished its five zero meter move. I can, uh, Atalanta's still swinging. Um, if you like, I'll wait in case this is an interesting feature for the back row. Well, maybe the most interesting thing we get. <laughs> yeah. I'm just searching to see if, if we see any uh, dead sponges in there. Hey, come up. Uh, come up. Come up, Tim. <coughs> you can zoom in a little more. If there's cucumber. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you see? What to the lower see? left, is that a dead sponge there? Yeah. It's a stalk of a. Yeah, we had a viewer catch it too. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's very old. That would be my suspicion. No. Yeah, no. probably only a million or two years. How many of them can we get? Let's get one to get, at least get one in the bag, maybe. Are you wanting to pick it up? Can we? Uh, we can try. Because we don't know what else we'll find. We can always get rid of that one and if we see a better. It'll be a good time because the ship has stopped. Yeah. lights back on. Don't be messing around here while we're uh, uh, taking a sample. We're coming up on the I need to, we need to see the tether and where Atalanta is and all that. We, Sunday. A viewer saying that there was a, a dead stock of little ways back that might be better. That looks uh, pretty new, Larry, and I also just mangled it. You want to put it in the box? Larry stepped out. <laughs> this is Dan, so I would say go ahead and put it in the box. Put it in the box, Roger. Can you if open find, the uh, if you storyboard find something box better, for we can always put another hit, one um, Yeah, you can hit um, K on the controller there. Thanks, I got it in the... Uh, I forget I have a stereo camera now. I don't need that. You can just open the box. Roger. Uh, I do have a view of it. <coughs> I think I'll do that. You just hold the button there. I do not have a view of it. I'm going to put this in uh, B. Okay. B for Boyo. Thank you. Thank you. That's two fails I've had with that. So usually I can get the jaws to stop moving so they don't continue to close, but uh, the last two samples I've taken, I've not been successful with that.
You can hit uh, P again when you get a chance. You can do 10. Go with your gut. <laughs> Go with your gut. Roger. It must be unplugged at the other end. That's possible. Robert unplugged it. Harry can have the mouse. <clears throat> so we are currently exploring McCall Seamount, and we just collected a dead sponge. Yeah, good for 20. Oh. Or whatever steps he was moving, it's pretty benign here so far. So. Sounds good. Bridge, bridge, now. Three zero at zero seven five, please. So the plan is to still continue up the ridge and uh, explore. There's another shrimp. Oh, counting that one, you need to add four more shrimp too. Four more shrimp. And one cuke. Alrighty. Thank <laughs> you, Zach. <laughs> Do you play similar games on your, your shifts, Holly? N no, we <laughs> mostly just joke about like rating uh, cucumber as a five on the highlights for Jonathan. <laughs> and then we talk about how a cucumber costume would be a really good costume for Jonathan. <laughs> oh man, next year. How do you make that, just a big trash bag? Uh, so we were thinking a uh, sleeping bag. A sleeping bag. Oh, that's right? actually really good. Yeah. yeah. Just cut the feet, you know? So yeah. There's got to be like caterpillar costumes out there too that you could yeah. just edit modify. Also, yeah. yeah. But sleeping bag is smart. <laughs> that was Manel's idea. Hmm. Maybe one of those bed mattresses. You know, the white ones that go across the bed? Yeah. Yeah, that would work. Need to have to shape the mouth or something. Shrimp. Shrimp, shrimp. One or two? One. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just twice as cool as the last one. Not rating size. <laughs> Dust cloud. <sighs> is that one in the water? What is that? That's a. Oh, what is? Is that, that the chicken? What's the chicken? Headless chicken. Oh, no, headless chicken. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Something to look at while I'm waiting for the boat there. I was zooming back and forth. Like. Is that the uh, official common name or just uh, the name we gave it? I'm not sure. Couldn't tell you. To look that up. Interesting. It's not going to be a very good image. It's uh, in my dust cloud there. That's all right.
Looks somewhere. like some type of sea slug or something. Maybe a nudibranch. I don't know. Oh no, you don't see much gills. You don't, yeah. Some type of slug. Interesting. Maybe a floating sea cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> Swimming. I'll put that on the maybe. Maybe, the maybe. Maybe count. <laughs> What is our sea cucumber shrimp count now? Oh, oh you missed a lot. Yeah, <laughs> shrimp count is up to 11. And sea cucumber count brought to you by Jonathan's, what's Jonathan? Jonathan's visual <laughs> is up to six. Ooh, so the shrimp have taken the heavy lead over the sea cucumbers in just half an hour. Oh, it was a, a, one of the chat. It is. Says what? it's a sea cucumber. That's actually its name, too, the headless chicken sea cucumber. Yeah. Who named that one? <laughs> Jonathan was talking about that one before. I know. That's why I was like, uh, that's what I think it is. Yeah. Due to its unique one. appearance, the species has been dubbed the headless chicken fish, headless chicken monster, There's and the starfish. Spanish dancer. I've seen Spanish dancers before, but it didn't yeah. quite look as... Right. Like I thought it would. I was nervous typing in headless chicken sea cucumber. I didn't know what that would give me. <laughs> so it is a sea cucumber. It's it is. Sea. So we take it off oh, the maybe and put it back. We're up to seven. Is this bamboo? No. That would be... What is that one? That's a good shot of it. Nice. How old do you think it is, Rennie? I thought a Spanish dancer was a nudibranch, but this is saying it's a sea cucumber, and sea cucumber and nudibranchs are not the same thing, so I'm kind of confused by that. I think this is, I think this is only the second one we've seen. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to do some Googling. Oh, so I think... The chat is saying it's misused for sea cucumber, so it's called the swimming sea cucumber, but it's not actually a sweet cucumber. It is a nudibranch, oh. and that makes more sense then. Maybe tell her will now. Okay. Is that another sea cucumber? Looks like it. Those purple ones we've been seeing. Yeah, that's a, a sea cucumber. Dan, would you be able to give us a dive update and where we're at in our dive plan here? Sure. So we started the dive this morning at, I guess, around 1100 is when we finally got on the bottom. 
Um, we started out at about 1,800 meters. We have slowly climbed up through the valley of the seamount over a sh over a saddle, back down again, and then now climbing up the other side. We are at about 1,500 meters coming up on that. Um, mostly seen uh, sand and rocks, a number of uh, coral species, and we're continuing up pretty much the steepest slope here. Uh, I don't think we're going to make it to the top before our dive time is ended, but we're going to move as far up the slope as we can and see if there is more cor coral diversity as we move higher in the water column. And we're currently at the McCall Seamounts, about uh, 100 miles west of the Big Island of Hawaii and about 200 miles south of Honolulu. Okay. So the chat is asking, if we were to turn off our lights, could you see any bioluminescence around? And it is a good possibility because we do get a lot of bioluminescence in the deep. However, I think there's doesn't seem like there's too much life around, so I'm not sure. It also depends on the sensitivity of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's very low light. It you know is I mean? very low so light. So therefore, you have to have the right cameras to go look at that. And sometimes it's not a visual, like visible spectrum. So it's maybe IR or UV. And I think our camera system right now is set up more for the photogametry modeling mapping than necessarily picking up those low level lights. Did everyone enjoy their dinner today? Get some ice cream? Yeah, it's always wonderful. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of funny how... There's another uh, fish. Oh, is that a, is that a tripod? Yep. So every Sunday here on board is ice cream day. So, it, you know, it gives you something to look forward to. You're like, ooh, it's Sunday. Nice. Yes. And I think, like, when I'm at home, I'm not like, it's ice cream day. You just get ice cream whenever you want it. But here, you can only have it on Sunday. Sometimes you lose track of the days, but you always know Sunday yes. at dinner time. I, I went through a time period where I did not eat ice cream for about two years. And that was because I got stuck in a freezer. Is that right? Looks like we have a sponge just coming by on the port side. And someone in the chat is commenting for us that MBARI ROV has a great bioluminescent detection. And then our HERC also has done dives with the cameras um, before, but that they're different cameras. And that is very true. And the purpose of this dive is for our photogametry models and so we don't want to turn the lights off because that would disrupt the programming and modeling um, configurations that we haven't set up before. So unfortunately on this dive we will not be able to turn off the lights to look for bioluminescence. But we have done it in the past. So Dan, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? 
Well, I had I had a vanilla today, vanilla bean. But that's just because you only had four options. If yeah. you had any option, would you still go for vanilla bean? Oh, well, this time of year, I always like the pumpkin. Oh. Oh, the pumpkin spice ice cream, very nice. Manal, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, uh, I'm I'm personally I'm a cake batter fan. Oh, cake I batter. Love, uh, the Stone Cold Creamery cake batter, or it, is there? You know, I actually mm, I don't go to Cold Stone. I was gonna say, these, do they still have like, Cold Stone anymore? They or? do. I, there's one in like downtown my hometown, but the I'm thinking of a very specific cake batter ice cream. It's on uh, on Chincoteague, Ch in Chincoteague, Virginia. Um, just one of those like small places. It's like one of those like childhood memory things. Yeah. Just. Oh, I, the, ha I have a I have an ice cream place like that. Yeah, just yeah. the best ice cream after like a long day at the beach. Leonard's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is Aww. the best ice cream I would say. Oh yeah, and they got there's they're, they're known for their dairy. So yeah. there you go. Simon, how about you? What's your favorite ice cream place or mm. flavor? And do you have like a old childhood ice cream parlor memory place? No, coming from the Coming from the UK, it's a ice cream we kind of, we used to have little vans that used to come around the housing estate where I lived. Um, so they'd have the ice cream van that served soft scoop with a flake chocolate bar in it, which oh. was quite nice. Um, but I'm a mint chocolate chip guy. Mint chocolate chip? Yeah, all the way. <laughs> Mike, how about you? Uh, favorite ice cream place? Uh, I remember my mom would take us uh, to go get ice cream for breakfast when we were kids on vacation. It would like one happen once a year. Um, but there was this place called Lampert's uh, that she would take us to, and they had bubblegum ice cream. Not my favorite, but <laughs> yeah, just one of those childhood memories. What is your favorite now? Ooh, mint chocolate. Mint chocolate? Yeah. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, how about yourself? Um, my favorite ice cream, especially growing up, was also from a local spot uh, in my hometown called Flavors. Oh. It was like a local farm where you could like go out and you'd see the cows that produced the milk that made the ice cream that you're eating, uh, which I always thought was really cool. But they also had this flavor that they called Cookie Monster. Oh, that sounds good already. Yeah, it was pretty much a combo of all the different like cookie ice creams. So it had like chocolate chip cookie dough and Oreos and all the good stuff in there. And they dyed the vanilla ice cream base blue. So growing up especially, it was always a treat to walk away with a blue mouth. <laughs> I like that. So I'm from Penn State, and we have our own creamery. Okay. And my favorite is Death by Chocolate. Death there. by so Chocolate. So if we're saying favorite places, it's Penn State Creamery Ice Cream. Okay. That's my favorite ice cream. Funny enough, I also have a Cookie Monster ice cream memory from in Baltimore, Maryland. Is it, does it turn your mouth blue as well? Oh, it so does. It's <laughs> the same. They got the vanilla base, but they got Oreos in it. And uh, yeah, shout out to Be More Licks. It's all over and it's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so one of our viewers is asking us, what do we eat when we are out on the water, not near land? So I think this expedition is two weeks, but so we're actually been eating really good and they have a good variety of food um, to kind of cover all dietary so if you're Bridge, vegan now, or vegetarian like there's been tofu Manal was talking about how much she loves the tofu there's uh, today for dinner there is chicken wings I believe lasagna Caesar salad uh, tofu what else was there today there was ribs ribs there were ribs uh, tuna about a shrimp tuna oh yeah there's uh, there's always a fish option Every meal, there's a fish option. There's usually always chicken or pork or meat or like all of them. Um, 
lunch today we had hamburgers or cheeseburgers and um, there's also oh man already forgetting all the stuff was that another shrimp i just saw a shrimp yeah mac and cheese mac and um, cheese yeah fries. that was the first time we had there's french fries every lunch yes. and it's been dangerous for me yes so yeah we eat pretty good i haven't been on the longer expeditions so mike how does the food when you get onto longer expeditions like month long i i can't imagine we eat you guys eat this good for a whole month Oh, they're busy up in front, yeah, still trying to uh, fix that winch. Mike was just doing something with the winch there, yeah. so he uh, We'll come back. Catch that question. Dan, have you been on longer expeditions? Not on this ship. Not on this ship? Nope. And each ship is very different. Yeah. <laughs> Johan, have you gone on longer expeditions? Also not on this ship, but awesome. I did go on one that was about 55 days. Yeah. The food definitely did change as you <laughs> yeah. progress. You get less and less fresh vegetables and fruits, I imagine. Yes. Like every breakfast There's no Amazon we have or go-kart delivery out here. I know. Sometimes I wish there can't, was, though. Can't get the fresh <laughs> lettuce. Aren't they supposed to, Amazon's supposed to start using drones here or something? Someone asked if uh, shrimp cocktails are available on EV Nautilus, and there has we have had shrimp. I don't think no one's I, you could make it into a There's shrimp fried cocktail shrimp tonight. I think there was fried shrimp tonight. Yeah. There's a little fish there. Copy. What? Oh yeah, right in the Atalanta. That's kind of okay. spidery looking there, but it wasn't a yeah. sea spider. It's too big of a body for a sea spider. The camera is showing uh, the view off the back deck with our deck frog and the sun setting is quite beautiful. Maybe we will actually be able to see the sunset today. Deck frog is happy after having a vacation off the last cruise. <laughs> we were saying, Mike, that we need to add like a Put some tape down on that back deck and give them a little tongue sticking out. It's when you uh, lay down one of the red tag lines mm -hmm. next to his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little fish there. Maybe a grenadier. Kind of hard to tell though. That yeah, fish is checking out our camera lens. So one of our bridge, viewers bridge is saying three zero at zero seven five, please quite a lot of animals swimming vertically and they're wondering if they're scanning the sea food or sea floor for food possibly what's um what's the current down there like right now is there a current at all um there's a little not too much it i mean i'm not putting any inputs into the rov right now yeah um yeah it seems pretty pretty calm down here right now
And Johan, every time you guys do ship movements, how long does a ship movement take to translate to our ROVs? Um, that depends on our depth. Uh, right now, since we're pretty deep, we're at about 1,500 meters. It's taking uh, maybe two or three minutes to do so. Um, so we got to kind of try to plan ahead as much as we can. One of our viewers is asking if anyone goes fishing while at sea. And that, no, we do not put any fishing lines over. Uh, you probably have to have permits for that, I'd imagine. At least I don't think anyone does. Who knows? <laughs> the deck tech crew is kind of grinning at each other up there. <laughs> I think it depends on the ship and where you are in the world. Yeah. It does. I've definitely been on ships where we've um, fished for uh, tuna and had barbecues with fresh tuna on board. Oh, that sounds literally amazing. Literally caught, you know, and, uh, <laughs> half an hour before the barbecue or while the barbecue's going on, it's that, you know. And, uh, yeah. Winch, winch. Control, please come up five meters. Oh, we got something red swimming over there. A shrimp, another shrimp. You already got it in the count. Got it in the count. I will say there are there are mahi mahi in the area. We've been fishing for mahi mahi down uh, when we were in the, yeah. in the CCZ. Yeah, they definitely caught some of those. There's a lot of them around the ship when we used to do the launch and recoveries. There's yeah. huge shoals of them and some brown sharks and a lot of squid and yeah. It's the fish so good they named it twice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've also heard the name dolphin fish from Mahi Mahi before. Interesting. That is true. Dolphin fish, Mahi Mahi. But there's different different species of uh, of Mahi Mahi. So you got the the pompano, and then your your regular Mahi Mahi out here. Um, when I start covering taxonomy with my students, one of the mean things I like to do is I show a picture of a mahi-mahi and I go, is this a dolphin? And it's like a true-false question. And they'll all go, no, that's not a dolphin. And I was like, yeah, it's a dolphin fish. And they're like, what? <laughs> like some places call it that. That's why we have scientific names. So. What is everyone's favorite fish to eat? Do you have a favorite fish to eat or do you not like fish? Rachel, do you like fish? I am actually allergic to fish. Are so, you and, allergic uh, to fish? Definitely, I think more so, more so shellfish, but okay. uh, I think fish in general seem to be on the safe side. I actually don't eat any. Any seafood? Nope. Um, do you like have issues with contamination ever before? No, I don't think it, um, I used to have a more severe allergy. I had a lot of years of allergy shots growing up to so kind of get it under control. So yeah. I don't, like, I mean, I have, I've never had an issue. You know, there's a lot of seafood served on Nautilus. Yeah. And I've never had any Winch, issues there. can you go ahead and repeat your last? Well, we're glad for that. <laughs> Dan, how about you? Do you have a favorite kind of fish? I try not to eat fish. Um, I, I think they're, you know, the overfishing and everything that, you know, the fish should really be in the ocean for, you know, all the species in the ocean to eat. <laughs> so you bring a good point up on overfishing, though. And I think, like, um, it does put some onus back on the consumer of being aware of what fish is overfish and what fish is sustainable and okay to eat. Um, Monterey Bay has a really good sea watch that you can look at and see like what fish are well managed and um, like for example a big one is white sea bass. White sea bass is a very common, you get it in a lot of restaurants. Um, its name though, it's that's a name given to it because 
it sounds more pleasing. And people are familiar with bass, but white sea bass is not actually a bass. It's a Patagonia toothfish. Hmm. And these are found in colder waters. And a lot of the population, because they live so deep, it's really unknown. There's not really a solid estimate on the population. And they're so important to the ecosystems there that it's really not recommended to eat them because of that. Oh, that's a big shrimp right there. Yep, I just got that down. What's our count at right now? Our shrimp count is at 21. Oh my. And Jonathan's photogrammetry cucumber count is at eight. Eight. We, we, we slowed eight. down on our cucumber Brought right to now. you by Jonathan's Photogrammetry. If you want 3D models of the ocean, come to Jonathan's Photogrammetry. <laughs> now having an uh, eight, to eight for one sale on uh, sea cucumber models <laughs> per dive. Next up is goosefish. <laughs> or moosefish. Our, cha our chat is saying that they love brook trout and can only eat three because the flavor is so intense, two to three times in a year. Total sustainable fish if you like it. I think that's one of the best things. It is kind of hard to keep track of what fish is okay to eat and what fish isn't okay. My rule of thumb for you is always to just eat local. Like, eat the fish that's close to where you are, and then, um, and from your local fishermen, you know. But some areas are definitely more overfished than others. So, Alaska's been doing a really excellent job of managing and maintaining their fisheries. Um, you want to try to probably avoid fish uh, that's imported because you also add in then your CO2 emissions and all that for bringing the fish here. And it's just been out of water for too long. Yeah, I'm not a, a huge seafood fan, but I was lucky enough recently going up the Labrador coast and in the Arctic to have Arctic char, which is uh, Ooh, yes. yeah, very nice, smoked by the, the locals in a little town called Nain on the Labrador coast. And that was very good. I'd love to make it to the east coast of Canada one day. I traveled around on the west coast of Canada a lot, but haven't made it to the east coast. Just so that everyone's on the same page, uh, since we're this deep, it's going to take us approximately 75 minutes to surface. Um, so that puts us at probably about a 45 minute 45 more minutes of modern time before we have to recover. What's this white thing here? Is this a sponge? Looks Can I have a slow zoom in there video? And yeah, copy. Do you want any tighter? Do you want me to zoom in more, or are you good here? Yeah, how's the uh, science team feel? It, that's good, you can move on, thank Roger. you. Copy.
So this is an interesting terrain. Um, see more like the lava on the left-hand side, and now it's like small pebbles. Yeah, we're getting back into maybe manganese nodules. This is what we kind of sampled earlier. It's very similar. Maybe there's a maglado maglodon tooth hiding in there. So Dan, our dive plan is to, we have to be back at the surface at eight, right? 8 and so, yep. and it was 45 minutes for recovery, was that right? Um, I think 75, I think 45 seven. minutes 45. of 45. bottom time. Oh. Oh, yeah. bottom time. So we have 45 Correct. minutes of bottom time left before we begin our recovery. Correct. Oh, another sea cucumber. And is that a shrimp or fish? <laughs> Something fish. floating fish. Winch, winch control. Please come up five meters. Simon, is that a sponge to your port, or is that just a crack in the rock there? Just a crack. No, I think that's uh, that's some kind of sponge. Nice looking sponge. I like the shapes coming off of it. So, chat, please feel free to write in if you have any questions, any Fun facts you want to know about the crew members or life out here aboard the Nautilus, you can head over to nautiluslive.org. And also when you're at the website, check it out. There's a lot of really good information. Winch, we have winch, please come up five meters. We have information about our science and tech that we're using out here. You can read about our new ca our camera system that we're using the Wildfield camera array. We also have information about all of our ROVs out here. And then if you head on over to our education tab, we also have a lot of really good resource out there. So if your kids are bored at home or you know, on break, you can check it out. There's some fun activities, even some arts and crafts that you can do with your um, kids, and then also some really good just like exploration A to Z flashcards that are pretty fun little games and activities that you can do. As well as signing up for our ship to shore interactions. And then if you click on over on the expedition tab, they'll tell you all of our past expeditions as well as what we have planned for the rest of the year. So we have two more dive, or two more expeditions. This one is currently NA-156, Ocean Exploration through Advanced Imagery. And then after this expedition. Winch, winch, control, please come up five meters. After this expedition, we have NA-157, which was our Hawaii mapping, and that one will be November 7th through the 17th. And then our last expedition for the year will be our Jarvis Island mapping. And that one will be November 19th through December 19th. I'll just give Bray a think that um, this is still going. And we just continue on as straight and narrow as a track as we can. 
Yeah. All right, sounds good. Looks like we're coming up on a little head. Winch, winch deck, please come up five meters. So we have a viewer asking if the other expeditions are mapping only with no ROVs. So I know the next expedition is going to be using the deep water mapping capabilities of the EV Nautilus so that we, the ship is situated with a mapping on it. And then they are going to be deploying, um, they're going to be deploying deep sea, deep autonomous profilers to collect visual, environmental, and eDNA data to enable baseline. Um, and then while they're near shore around the main Hawaiian islands, it's been here, it's been relatively well surveyed. Many offshore areas remain completely unmapped. And so this kind of hinders the effect to manage the resources of this environment here. And so we're going to be working with NOAA and the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute and the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management um, to map this area. So yeah, I don't think there will be much of any ROV on that next one, but that's outside my pay grade. So. Nope, the ROVs won't be on the ship. The ROVs will not be on the ship. Yep, okay. There'll be one uh, one vehicle that's a lander. Yeah. That, uh, that DAP lander is the same one that we had during the tech challenge. Right. So the the twelve foot tall beast. So the train is looking more rocky, more like pillow lava. Yes, we do have more of this pillow basalt formations. So let's get some coral going though. And some more corals and sponges. Well, we're currently at 1,453 meters. So I'm hoping as we come up in shallower in depth, we'll see more. We have a comment asking about my students being in Radford, and they heard that Bette Midler went to Radford. Yes, Bette Midler is our one and only famous that? graduate. It looked like a little eel. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. A couple bamboo corals here, though. And that's a big one. Wow. And then, yes, my students at Radford, since we're close to Pearl Harbor, we do have a really high population of military students. But we also have a pretty high population of um, locals as well. Winch. We have a big Winch. Samoan population and a big Micronesian population as well. This is a beautiful glass sponge right here. Science, is this or the uh, more dead sponges around it what we're looking for? Or um, yeah, we're looking for dead. This is alive. And like well, yeah. Is there one right there? Is there one below it? 
we're kind of I think it's I think it's well. we got one very similar to that when when Dr. Mayer was here um, so I think we can continue on copy sounds good thank you I think they were looking for more of the fan coral or something like that, that was I see. different species Mike, would you know the answer of this if um cucumbers two is that two or one? Two. 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 Um will Drix or the other AUVs be involved in the last two expeditions later this year? No, the uh Drix will not be involved nor Mesobot. Uh for the next cruise we'll just have the deep autonomous profiler lander. Uh, that was on the tech challenge, but both Drix and Mesobot will not be uh, on the ship for the remainder of the season. And then a viewer is asking, why are tow sled ROVs used? <coughs> Sorry, okay, I repeat that. Why are tow sled ROVs used? So basically, why are we using Atlanta with Hercules? So, yeah, uh, Atalanta gives us uh, a couple of good. Um, advantages so as previously mentioned when they look at the heave of the vessel and everything else at Atalanta will take all of that heave and then we have a 30 meter soft tether with some boys on it uh, coming to Hercules so the movement from the that's translated from the sea surface down to the cable from Atlanta is kind of absorbed by Atlanta and allows Hercules to to fly around without being uh, affected by any kind of ship movement also uh, provides us with a beautiful overview of uh, of Hercules as we fly around, which is pretty unique in the uh, in the ROV world. We don't get um, very many systems out there where you have the uh, the ability to follow and give you a a serious seriously cool overview of your, what you're flying around. It's, uh, Is that another shrimp? Two? Looks like two of them. Two of them. Two, two shrimp. shrimp. Two more shrimp. So what does that bring us up to now? That brings us up to uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27 shrimp. How do you do your tallies? Do you do the traditional just dashes or do you do boxes? I do dashes. Dashes. Old school. When I was doing my survey work, they made us do boxes, and that way you don't accidentally put in an extra line or not. So you do a box with a line down the middle to tally five. So how about um, if people want to explain, where did you grow up? So, Rachel, where did you grow up? 